Hey everybody, Shabo here. I'm back for another video, and today I'll be showing you how to make a story game in Roblox. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make a teleporter. So we want to teleport them to the next game, which is going to be the game where the story is at. So first we're going to open up Explorer and Properties. You can see it in View at the top. Go to Explore, click that, click Properties as well, and then they should be on your screen somewhere. Next, we're going to go to Home at the top here, click Part, and this is the teleporting box that we will be using. So when players are standing inside of it, it will teleport them to the game. So you can move it around and make it as big as you want. You can also make it invisible, so if you have it selected in Explorer, you go to Properties and then you find Transparency. You can make it invisible. I'll just make it like this. And then I'll make it neon. And I'll make it purple. Now we have our teleporting box. You're also going to want to go to properties and turn off collision. So you want to go to properties here after you select it. Scroll down and turn this off. Now we're going to go to explore again. Right click the object this time. Insert object. And then insert a script. Now we're going to start setting up some variables. So local players equals game gets service players. Local teleport service equals game get service teleport service. We're going to set up a variable for the timer. So I guess I'm going to make it like 10 seconds for this. And then the max amount of players. So max players equals, I'll just say three. Since I can only test this with a, like one to two people. Now we're going to put a loop. So while task I'll wait one do. So every time it, one second passes, it'll run the code inside of here. Now I'm going to check for all the players inside of it. So local players equals this, which is a table. I'm going to store them in this variable whenever they're detected inside of the box. So local touching equals workspace get parts in box script.parent.c frame and then script.parent.size. And then we have to set some parameters, so overlap parameters. And then I can just put this and then just set that to the box inside of a table. And then I can put it right here. And that part is done. Everything that's touching the box is going to be stored right there. Now we're going to loop through everything in that table. So for I thing in pairs touching do. So for everything that's inside of this table, it'll run this code for it with this as the object. This variable as the object. And then now we're going to check for a player. So local player equals players get player from character thing dot parent. We're also going to make sure to check if it exists. So if thing and thing dot parent then and then move this inside of here. We want to make sure it exists first because sometimes Roblox just fires it even though it's not even there. I don't know why but it happens. Then if player and it's not already in the table because players aren't just one part they're multiple. So and not table to find players player. We also want to change this name because we already have a name for the player service, so players2. So let's we'll put that right there, and then that'll fix that. So what this is doing is checking if there is a player, and then we're checking if they are inside of the table or not. We don't want to put multiple of them in the same table because that'll cause glitches. Then table.insert players2 player. So for every player inside of the box, it'll put them in the table, and now we have them saved. Now we're going to check if it's the max amount of players. If not, we will count down, and after that countdown is over, we'll teleport them anyway, because we don't want them having to wait forever, because they're going to play with some friends or something. So if hashtag players2 is greater or equal to max players, then to make sure it doesn't overflow because people enter it at the same time, we're going to put and hashtag players2 is less than max players. That will prevent it from overflowing. So if we have enough players, we can just teleport them to the game. So let's print teleport there. Otherwise, time if hashtag players2 is greater than zero, so there's at least one player in there, we will count down the timer. Timer minus equals one. If timer is less or equal to zero, then we will teleport them alone on the, by themselves. Now we're going to want to get the ID of the game we're trying to teleport them to. So we're going to want to click view here at the top, go to game explorer, 
and then you want to double click places and then get your place if you don't already have one you can right click add new place but I already have one right here I'm going to right click it copy ID to clipboard now we can close that and then now we're going to try to teleport them so teleport service teleport async players to that so now it'll try to teleport them to that you'll actually want to put this first because that's the first argument that you need for it and we can do the same thing here we'll also want to reset the timer whenever there's nobody in it just to make sure that so when doesn't enter the box for half a second and then get teleported instantly and now the teleporting script should be done so if I open output here this will show us errors because if we try to teleport in studio it'll error because you cannot teleport in studio so I'm gonna go to home and press play now I'm gonna go inside the box and then after 10 seconds it should teleport us so we're gonna wait that and as you can see we got a teleport error which means that it worked and obviously if you had enough players to go inside the box it would teleport them instantly so now we know that that is working now we can go to game explorer again and then we can go to the place that we're teleporting them to so we're just going to double click it and then I'm going to go to there okay so now I'm at the new place which is where our story is going to be taking place at so we're going to want to wait for them to spawn in of course I'm just going to use a map that I already uploaded this is the crossroads from Roblox I'm just going to use this because I do not feel like building and I'm going to put a spawn right here delete the base plate and this is what I'm going to be using for my story obviously you would want to probably build your own map for yours but I'm going to be using this so it's faster for the tutorial now we're going to want to wait for everyone to load in so we're going to set up some borders so I'm going to go to explore right click on workspace insert object folder and then put borders we're going to be using this to open up and close borders so I'm going to do this real quick this is going to be our waiting area for when people load in make sure the box walls are thick enough so people can't glitch through it because people will do that you can see that in other camping games and then once your box is done we can click all of these select all of them by holding shift and then clicking that or if they're separated you can hold control and click all of them separately I'm going to name this wall and then I'm going to make it invisible now we cannot see them but they are still there and we can still collide with them so nobody can go past this box now we're going to group it up so right click group as a model or you can press ctrl G when they are selected and I'm going to name this spawn border we're going to drag it into the folder we made and now that should be done next we're going to start scripting so go to server script service right click it and insert object script right here and I'm going to name it main script just to organize it a little bit so now we're going to set up some variables again in this script so local players equals game get service players local lighting equals game get service lighting just in case you want to make some effects or change it to night or something like that and now we're going to make it wait so I'm just going to make it wait like i say like five seconds because that's how long it takes to load in the studio and if you want it to take longer for people to load in you can just change this to like 15 or something I'm gonna change it to five we're also going to want to go to the players and explore and then turn this off because we don't want the characters to automatically load in we don't want them respawning after they die unless you do want them to but for this type of story game we don't want them to do that players dot player added we're going to make a player joined function so local function player joined player and I guess I can wait like five one second for them to load in completely then load character and now we're going to connect it to the player service so players dot player added connect player joined and then for people who have already joined in for I player in pairs players get players like the same thing as the last time but with players instead and then player joined player you also want to put this inside of a spawn function like this 
just to make sure it doesn't take too long because someone can join while other players are being registered and then they won't be registered at all. So what this does is it makes the function run, but it doesn't make this it doesn't make the script stop on it. We're also going to want to set up a variable for when the round has already started because we don't want someone to load in mid round and then be stuck outside the map or something or like not where they're supposed to be. So local started equals false. If started, then we can just kick them for now. If you want to make them spawn to a different location when they joined there, you can figure that out, but I'm going to do the kick for now because we don't really have any places for them to spawn at yet. So I'm just going to wait three seconds. I'm going to I'm going to move this over here, wait five seconds there for them to load in. And then now we can start making our story with scripting. I'm going to show you how to make a dialog box. So what you want to do is go here, put a main GUI, or just don't name it that. I just name it this because it looks better. And then you can start making the UI. You can use this up here, or you can insert object and then put the frames and stuff like that. So I'm going to design my UI real quick. My dialog box is finished. It's pretty simple. I'm actually going to change this size a bit here to make it a bit smaller. So now after you finish your dialog box, you want to make sure it has a text label and an image if you want to, if you want it to have an image. It doesn't have to have one. So I'm just going to get an image I have, like a Dennis image right here. I can make the background invisible. And then you have your dialog looking like that. Now we're going to start scripting the dialog system. So you want to right click replicated storage, insert object, remote event, and then you will have that there. You want to go to the GUI insert object local script and then we're going to want to set up some variables in here too always setting up variables so local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage and then remote event equals replicated storage we show remote event then remote event dot on client event connect function and then dialog we're going to want to get the text so local frame equals script dot parent wait for child frame and then local label equals frame wait for child text label so that'll set a variable from the frame to the text label that we are going to be changing the text on now if you wanted to do it simply you could just do label the text equals dialog but we're not going to just just do that we're going to make it have a type reader effect where it slowly places the text because every game does that it looks better so we're going to be using this property for that as you can see it's five letters, ten letters. We can use that to make the typewriter effect that we want. So for i equals one hashtag label dot hashtag dialog one do. So this is how many letters are in the the string that we sent, which is basically just the text. That's how many letters there are. We're going to we're going to go from one to the amount of letters. Then label dot max visible whatever that word is equals i and then at the end we can just set it to negative one because that'll just display everything and then once your system is done you can basically just copy this part these variables right here go to the top paste it right there into the server script and then we're going to test it so remote event fire all clients and then in quotes you can just put whatever text so i'm going to put hello i'm dennis and then press play and as you can see, we're put into the game and then it puts the text there. We didn't get to see it load in the text because we can have to put a wait here. I'm just going to put that. You can change the amount of time, but this is the slowest it can go. If you wanted to load the text even faster than that, you could just go and put this here. And just change the number to make it even faster. But for this, we're just going to use one. And that's part one of how you make a story game in Roblox. I would continue, but apparently Roblox Studio doesn't want to work, as you can see right here. Make sure to slap that like button and punch the subscribe button. Peace.